As a rock climber, how is bench press going to help me to climb better and send my project? Sure. So, I mean, believe it or not, the chest is used very extensively in our pull motion. So it definitely helps to support that shoulder girdle and that shoulder stability when we're pulling. Um, and so if we can build strength and we can build power in that front chest and in the anterior shoulder, definitely going to help with a lot of those moves. Okay, that's interesting because, you know, oftentimes what you hear is like, well, let's exercise the antagonist muscles to mm -hmm. offset all the pulling that we're doing. But you're saying, uh, yes, I'm sure that's part of it as well. But even when we're doing various climbing motions or moves, if we're bouldering harder on the moon board and, and, and that kind of thing, you're actually, the, the bench press is going to um, help you to pull off some of those moves. Sure. I mean, if we think about, um, you know, that hand in a position on the rock wall, as we move it farther and farther away from the shoulder, we have to use that kind of anterior chest and the scaly muscles to help to hold that shoulder in a good position. So, you know, all those compression movements, all those movements where we're sliding side to side are definitely going to be a lot of chest dependent. And we do not want that to be a limiting factor if we want those fingers to be right. a limiting factor. Um, compression boulders, uh, one right. of my weaknesses. So I need to um, be doing a little bit more bench press. Let's talk about um, sets, reps, protocols, mm -hmm. timing. Um, as we know from the foundational overview, we're going to be doing um, maybe a, a few days a week of this on the off season, right? The strength yeah. building and on season, maybe it's just one day a week. Um, but for bench press specifically, how are you looking at the sets and the reps and uh, the amount of weight that you're going to be wanting to, to target? Sure. So I, I kind of use a percentage of my one rep max. You can look on any of the um, weightlifting websites or on Google if you just type in percentage of your one rep max for that specific lift mm -hmm. and get how many reps should correspond to your one rep max. Got it. So if we're doing, say, that three, four, or five uh, reps per set, I'm looking at maybe somewhere between 75 and 85% of my one rep max. Got it. So that's really what I'm looking for. So if my one rep max is 200 pounds, then I'm looking to do somewhere in that 80% range. So that would be 160 pounds. Right. And I'm doing that for three to five reps. Okay. And as we know, again, from the foundational um, overview video, we don't want to go beyond five reps because that's going to build, uh, that's a hypertrophy, right? We're going to mm -hmm. be, we're going to be putting on more mass than we want to be doing. If we're staying in that um, kind of three to five rep zone, is there, um, kind of a benchmark for somebody who's fairly new to this type of exercise, a beginner, uh, to know um, how often they should be adding weight, or is it just purely based on feel? Sure. I mean, there's a lot based on feel. I would encourage someone to not add more than maybe 10 or 15% per week. Um, that's a general rule of thumb. So if you're doing 100 pounds on the bench, the next week, even if you're feeling great, probably not going more than 110 or 115, and then see how that does, and then maybe keep moving up slowly. Um, I mean, the number one rule in training, right, as Eric Horst says, is don't get injured. Don't get training. injured. Yeah, That's so right. We, you know, the amount of time that you would have to take off and the amount of strength that you would lose from getting injured is never worth that extra rep or that extra weight that you were put on the bar. Got it. And we know that you like to program all of your foundational strength uh, on one day. You'll mm -hmm. kind of toggle between your various exercises. You work on hangboarding and that kind of thing. Uh, are you also then climbing on a day like that, or is it recommended to... Uh, take some time off before then getting into typical like kind of rock climbing training? Sure. I, I think it depends on your training history and what your body's capacity for training would be. I do my training after the weightlifting session. It's about a 20 or 30 minute session. I put it right at the end of my warm up. I feel like I'm really good and you know recruited to go in and do a, a climbing session. But if you're new to the weightlifting, you may be totally wiped out and it may need to be a separate day kind of thing. It just depends on your time. Nice. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching these videos. Quick 30 seconds to tell you about the Patreon that I've started to help fund this massive operation running out of my podcast slash YouTube slash utility closet, which I'm coming to you from right here. Um, check out the Patreon down below. I've got pro clinics with some of the biggest names in the sport, exclusive for patrons, helping you learn how to level up in your training and your performance, all sorts of other bonus content. Appreciate your support. Check it out. Um, okay, good. Well, let's talk about form for a second here. Yeah. What do we need to be thinking about? Uh, what's the perfect bench press? Sure. So I would say kind of the, the big three for me is, uh, number one, the grip. Mm -hmm. um, so unlike, unlike a deadlift where we're really gripping the bar with our fingers in that overhand, double overhand grip, in the bench press, we want to load the bar across the two bones of the forearm. 
So we have the radius and the ulna, and that's gonna take a lot of the weight. And so instead of holding the bar more in your palm up towards your fingers, you almost want the bar across those lifelines. That would be the number one thing that I see is that people grabbing the bar and then putting a lot of torque on their wrist, and that can cause a lot of pain, especially in climbers. For sure. So making sure that those wrists are pronated to get the bar directly over top of the forearm is kind of the first thing. The next thing would be making sure that in your warm up you're taking a grip that's wide enough so that as you're taking the bar down towards the sternum, usually right below the nipple line, you want to make sure that those forearms are vertical. You, want, you don't want them to be too close, you don't want them to be too far away, you want them to be vertical so that you can load the bar anatomically. And so we can determine that by just, uh, with, before you even put weight on the bar essentially, mm -hmm mess Figuring with the width exactly the bars are marked usually with like some spacer kind of markings and so once we do it a few times you mm -hmm. probably can just return to exactly what you know to be your grip um, and then what about the the lifting motion itself sure so the one thing that i like to do is i will really contract my rhomboids and those trap muscles in the back to close those shoulder blades behind me right on the bench. So you want to create a firm foundation in the back. Mm. Um, so as I am getting ready to lift the bar off of the rack, I'm going to feel like someone is putting their hand down my spine and I'm squeezing those shoulder blades together to make sure it's a nice firm foundation. And in the same sense, I'm making sure my whole lower back is contracted and my feet are placed flat on the floor and I want to keep my butt on the bench. I don't want to lift my butt. Yeah, sometimes you'll see, uh, I say sometimes you'll see, like if you're looking at me trying to lift a heavy weight off a bench, you kind of like thrust your hips to yeah. kind of try and give it that extra sure. kick, that extra push, but that's poor form. I should take weight off in that scenario, I'm exactly. assuming. Exactly. Yeah, okay. you want to do is, is, you know, as much weight as you can lift safely and with good form. What about velocity on uh, the lift as well as uh, kind of coming back down for your next rep? Yeah, so I would say if I'm moving in a strength phase, I'm going to work on more of a controlled motion, both eccentric and concentric and then as I move into a power phase I may take some weight off and work on more of that explosive motion. Um, one of the things that really helps me is that I will keep my eyes focused on the ceiling where the bar originated. So after I take it off of the bar and I hold it up I can look at the bar and I can focus on that point on the ceiling and I keep my eyes focused right there and that's my goal on the way up is to push through the body all the way until I move that bar over that spot.